Hello and welcome to yet another episode of your favorite maritime program, Nimasa This Week. As always, Nimasa This Week is brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the nation's number one authority concerning our oceans, our waters, and of course the maritime sphere as a whole. My name is Ubong Isien, and as always, I will be your guide on this voyage. You are watching Nimasa this week. Nimasa this week. Nimasa this week. Nimasa this week. It's the voice of maritime. The voice of maritime. The voice of maritime. Please stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. Remember that we are still in the deep blue season. And the hashtag to use if you want to interact with us online is hashtag deep blue as well as our long-standing hashtag the voice of maritime today on the program as always we begin with the director general's diary what has the dg of nimasa dr bashir jamo been up to you get to find out his various activities within the nigerian maritime domain on dg's diary also on the program bc george takes us into a very important discussion on Know Your Convention, our KYC segment. And then our usual regulars as you've come to know them. So if you're ready, as we always say here in Nimasa, let's anchor away. This is deep blue, common coast and safer seas. Security is piracy. The integrated national maritime surveillance and security infrastructure. Coming soon, 10th June 2021. Powered by NIMASA. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NAMASA, is raising maritime education awareness among students of post-primary schools. The Director General, Dr. Bashiru Jamo, accompanied by the Deputy Head Abuja Zonal Office, Mrs. Mojib Jimo, visited Premier Academy School in Lugbe, Abuja, as part of events marking the 2021 Children's Day celebration. Let me face you, the leaders of tomorrow, the maritime professionals of tomorrow, the owners of sea and the sea assets in Nigeria of tomorrow. Happy Children's Day to you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I am sure not all of you can understand the functions or the meaning of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency because we don't have sea near this noble school that you can easily see what type of wealth we can generate from the sea. I will try as much as possible to define what duties 
of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency and how it relates to each and every one of you here. Dr. Jamo encouraged students of the school, specifically those offering science subjects, to consider maritime related careers, especially now that NEMASA is increasing commitment in promoting the cabotage regime that enhances job opportunities for indigenous professionals. While presenting the materials to the principal of the school, Dr. Jamo said the donations were in line with the agency's corporate social responsibility. Items presented include 10 computers, UPS, books, t shirts, amongst other gifts. Also, with the agency, so that you can remember our visit, you can remember this Children's Day celebration. After the presentation, the Nemasa boss, in the spirit of the Children's Day celebration, took time to interact and play games with the students. <laughs> The DG also announced the setting up of an endowment fund and scholarships for the students willing to study maritime related courses. The Director General of NEMASA, Dr. Bashir Jamo, has called on the Nigerian Guild of Editors, in particular and all journalists, in the publicity and enlightenment of the populace on the need for a blue economy. The DG NEMASA made this call at the 2021 Biennial Convention of the Nigerian Guild of Editors that took place in Kano. In his opening remarks, the DG thanks the editors and indeed all journalists for their support and publicity of the agency's activities. Then the master boss stressed that the agency is bringing the eight littoral states together for partnership as major stakeholders in the development of the nation's blue economy as an alternative to oil. We started the to identify the neutral states. And those neutral states we are eight. So far we have visited five governments. We have only three governments left. Now we want them to key in and to develop the policy that will enhance our future generation in terms of using our water wealth resources. And in so doing, different governments gave us their own different areas of their own comparative advantage. We are now compiling these compared areas of comparative advantage. How we will make sure we will make this uh, noble uh, policy available to the Nigerian groups of editors so that they can educate Nigerians and see the purpose where they can go. The resources are enormous. Dr. Jam also touched on the Deep Blue project and the positive impacts it has so far on the maritime sector, which will be sustained. We have received presidential approval for the plugging off of this asset. And most of this asset already been deployed. And so far, we have started recording successful nature of this project. He extended invites to the Guild and all editors to the flag of of the Deep Blue Project by Mr. President in Lagos in a matter of days. Statistics have it, out of the over 1.2 million seafarers worldwide, only a meager 2%, that is 24,000, are females. Hence, the International Maritime Organization, IMO, is advocating for a gender balance in the maritime work environment. In line with this, a Catch Them Young program targeted at secondary school girls with a view to sensitizing and encouraging them to tread the maritime career path, tagged Girls Go to Sea campaign, which is a public enlightenment maritime career talk and cancelling program organized for girls of Queen's College Yaba by Face of Maritime International in conjunction with NEMASA. The campaign was to create awareness for Nigerian girls to study maritime related courses at the tertiary level in order to take other career opportunities available for women in the maritime sector and to see more Nigerian women become seafarers, marine engineers, ship captains, marine surveyors, naval architects, manning agents, steve doors, ship owners, master mariners, amongst others. Delivering the goodwill message of the DG of the Massa at the event. Assistant Director in Charge of Maritime Labor Services, Dr. Amos Kujay, 
admonished the girls not to see any career as being difficult. There are many opportunities, but again, what will keep you going? What will give you that confidence to say, I can do it if anyone can do it, is that anything that is hard is not in existence. Representing the DG of Namasa, Director of Internal Audit, Mrs. Olamide Odunsoya, took time to explain what it takes to embark on a career path in maritime, stating that it is not about the gender but about focus and determination. Who you are is what will determine where you get to. It's not by your gender. It's not because, oh, I'm a female, then I cannot become a captain of a vessel. In the course of this presentation, you will see all female crew, all female officers manning a vessel, a seagoing vessel. At the end of the Enlightenment campaign, girls were able to ask questions and interact with resource persons. Some of the participants shared their thoughts. First of all, I have to say that I'm elated that this program has been organized to sensitize us about the maritime sector. Well, the way forward is more enlightenment, more communication, more engagement with students, especially the girl child, so as to encourage them to come into the maritime industry. The masses deep blue, common coast and safer seas. Security is piracy. The integrated national maritime surveillance and security infrastructure. Coming soon, 10th June 2021. Powered by Nimasa. In this concluding installment, we'll be considering other types of maritime vessels that ply the oceans. Passenger ships. Passenger ships, as the name suggests, are mainly used for transiting passengers. Ferries are vessels used for transiting passengers on short distance routes, while cruise ships are mainly used for recreational activities. Cruise ships are like luxurious floating hotels with state of the art facilities. Fishing vessels. Fishing vessels used for commercial fishing at sea are commonly called trawlers. A fishing trawler, also known as a dragger, is a commercial fishing vessel designed to operate fishing trawls. Trawling is a method of fishing that involves actively dragging or pulling a net through the water behind one or more trawlers. Specialized vessels. Specialized vessels are constructed ships used for specific purposes. Examples are research vessels. They are special types of vessels used for carrying out a variety of research at sea. Some of the most common types of research vessels are hydrographic vessels, oceanographic vessels, and polar vessels. Salvage vessels. Salvage vessels are vessels engaged in rescue operation and recovery of lost property at sea. Barge carriers. A barge is a float-bottomed boat, built mainly for river and canal transport of heavy goods. Offshore vessels. Offshore vessels mainly help in oil exploration and construction jobs at sea. Offshore vessels are of several types. They specialize in transporting extremely heavy or bulky objects such as ships and large industrial components. Some heavy lift vessels are equipped with high capacity cranes, drill ships, floating production and storage units. Most of your activities appears to be uh, domiciled, or should I say, channeled uh, in the Nigerian maritime space. Why is that so? Because predominantly the Nigerian maritime space is the medium mostly used. Mostly used. 
80 uh, percent of all our you know commerce is is by that you know through that uh, medium. You know, however, Shippers Council is not a maritime organization. I have always teased you say it's not a local organization domiciled by the sea. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we are throughout the modes, throughout the chain. All the modes of transportation is being superintended by Nigerian Shippers Council. We are talking about the sea, which is origin, uh, you know, of most of it. But we are also in the air, um, aviation sector. We are with the rails. We are with the land and um, other means of uh, transportation. So it, the multimodal, you know, approach to it, and we have to see goods move from the factory, you know, overseas, you know, to the warehouse or to the house to the end user. So we are in door-to-door -door, you know, delivery of cargo, and we're everywhere. I want to raise the issue of sea blindness. From your view, can you explain that concept first, and then answer the question, as a nation, despite being endowed by such an expanse of coasts, from Lagos down to, say, Bayelsa, Cross River, and then the entire ocean. Are we sea blind? Not really. We cannot be sea blind with everything happening. Functionally. functionally. Yes, well, uh, could be. <laughs> the most important thing is to be aware of your domain. Uh -huh. Once you have that awareness, then you will know what, um, you know, uh, shipping or sea could do, you know, to your economy. Again, we have to not to uh, romanticize. That's what we have been doing. Uh, looking at shipping or the sea as something, you know, fixated with it. But the most important thing is how can we uh, harvest what the sea has given us, you know, so that will add to the economy in terms of infrastructure, in terms of employment. It is what I've said all the time. It's like every year, each sector comes and sit down and said, this is what I have donated to the economy. Agriculture will do that. You know, Nollywood will do that. Uh -huh. Transport and shipping will similarly do that and say, this is what I've contributed. And um, so it is very important that the government realizes, first of all, that there must be rules of doing things, but that we are endowed. Nigeria is endowed with uh, so much sea resources, which could be the basis for Nigeria's industrialization. That's number one. Secondly, it's also an alternative to you know, uh, mono economy that we are running, unfortunately, with a lot of, uh, you know, risks and uh, dangers. We have seen how um, the price of fuel has plummeted. Uh, we have seen every day the quest for man to bring alternative to fossil fuel. And it is time we realize that there is an option, there is an alternative to oil economy. And that alternative is uh, actually the maritime economy. So we cannot, even if we want, be blind, <laughs> see blind. Yes, you know, uh, it is important that we realize this is a sector. Well-organized could fetch, you know, this country more than the oil sector. Hello viewers, welcome to another segment of Know Your Convention on the Master This Week, The Voice of Maritime. I remain your host, Olabisi George, and today we'll be speaking on one of the most significant international conventions that regulate the maritime industry. It is known as the International Convention on the Safety of Life at Sea, also known as SOLAS. And today I have two guests with me that will be discussing the introductory aspects of the convention. With me today is Mr. Anthony Priye Pregafi, Chief Ship Registration Officer of NIMASO. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. 
and also Mrs. Arit Impubri, Assistant Chief Legal Officer of Nemaso. You're welcome to the segment. Thank you very much. Um, let me start with you, Mr. Priya. Um, what led to this International Convention SOLAS? Let me state from the outset that <clears throat> the International Convention for Safety of Lives at Sea, otherwise known as SOLAS, is the most important international treaty concerning the safety of Martian vessels because it's all about uh, the safety of human beings. Uh, in the early hours of the 15th of April, the vessel Titanic side swiped through the starboard side, an iceberg took in water and sank in the Newfoundlands in the North Atlantic uh, Sea. The hue and cry that visited this disaster actually compelled or motivated the United Kingdom to call for an international conference. That led to the first SOLAS in 1914. And thereafter, there was another conference held in 1929. Furthermore, in 1960, another conference was called this time under the auspices of uh, the HIMO. And lastly, another conference held in 1974. It may interest you to note that as of today, the 1974 uh, convention has about 164 uh, contracting parties and it is the last convention which has been updated several times. In a nutshell, this is the historical perspective of uh, the SOLAS. Thank you for that um, information. What do you mean contracting parties? You mean countries and, um, that, okay. that actually participated and have signed, and signed up and are actually enforcing, enforcing solar in their maritime domains. Yes. Let me come to you, Mrs. Zimpubre. Just give us like an overview of the convention. Being the significant one that regulates the industry, it appears to be quite um, important and relevant to the safety of life at sea. So just give us an, the objective of the convention, of the SOLAS convention, and the overview of it. Thank you very much. I'll start with the objective. The SOLAS Convention is a um, convention that is, was adopted by the IMO specifically to specify minimum... When you say IMO, the International Maritime Organization. Yes, yes, the International Maritime Organization to specify minimum standards for the construction, equipment and operation of ships to enhance safety of ships, safety of um, navigation, and of course security. Then the overview of the convention, I mean, the SOLAS convention is quite bulky, as in the document itself, and it's been divided into two parts. The first part has to do with the articles, the requirements, and what have you. The second part has to do with the list of certificates that are supposed to be carried on board the vessel, and also resolutions of the maritime safety conference that have been adopted by state parties. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. This is when we get to read to you the tweet for the week from the DG of Nimasa, straight from his Twitter handle at Jamo Bashir. This time round, the DG is reflecting sadly over the loss of life in our waters. Hashtag feeling sad. Just when we had enjoyed a respite for almost a year, Without a major incident, I received the news of the Niger boat mishap with great sorrow. My heartfelt condolences to the government of Niger State and the families who have lost loved ones to this watery tragedy. As you can see, this is a very sad development 
and NIMASA in conjunction with the various agencies in the Nigerian maritime space, such as NIWA, the MPA, amongst others, have already set up a joint committee on safety in our waters, including LASWA, especially here in Lagos. It's expected that the collaborative efforts of this working group will yield positive results as it relates to how safe we ply our waters. Of course, you can continue this conversation with the DG of the Massa. His Twitter handle remains at Jamo Bashir. And you can also extend your online conversation to our Nimasa official handles, be it on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Then if you are in business, especially in the maritime business, or you want to get involved in making money the maritime way, the Nimasa official website as displayed on your screen is your go-to place for immediate information. There's so much that you can do in the Nigerian maritime space. You could set up a maritime training institute. If you're building a jetty or you want to register your vessel, so much. Or there are issues you want to bring to the notice of the agency in terms of pollution in a marine environment. The NIMASA official website will provide you the guidance in engaging officially with the agency. you've enjoyed today's episode of your favorite maritime program, NIMASA This Week, The Voice of Maritime, and that you will join NIMASA in this all too important journey to advance our economic fortunes by virtue of our coastal status. So till I see you next time, remember that a rising tide lifts all ships. All that NIMASA is doing day and night as a maritime authority promoting and regulating the industry is to engender consistent tides that will lift as many interested ships that come within our maritime space. So till I see you next time, my name remains Ubong Isian, and I'm asking you yet again to stay on course. Bye-bye.